just, yeah. Anyways, uh, it's... Uh, we'll explain the title later. That has to do with something else. <laughs> Uh, wh where do you want to start? It's, we can go off more on the Flash DM. There's, there's so much in the Flash DM. There really is. Yeah, yeah, let's start with the Flash. So we're recording, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I have a video on that. But, it, it, it's, it's kind of like, I was also going to write it that I think it's funny. And that, I don't know, I, I'll admit it's being stupid. I don't use the damn product. I, I, I purposely, in the old days, coded as much. This is before even... <laughs> Amongst these libraries were, were developed like jQuery and all this other stuff to, to prove that you could do all kinds of things within code, right? And I hated Flash. I hated how long it took to load things, all this other stuff. However, that, that was when Macromedia uh, had owned it. It, it, it. Then, slowly but surely got better. They were able to do like streaming things, and then they totally got to the power of what I call like ActiveX like things and, and, and Java applets that really harness a lot of the power. And then my programming history uh, of the web, which didn't last too long because I went into databases and all that, that it, it was a slow deterioration of what you could do with a client machine. From each security breach that eventually occurred, these security exploits, developers got shut out layer by layer. Yeah. Where we almost completely sandboxed and we almost had no power whatsoever to what we would want to harness within the machine. Even if we were credible programmers, credible programs without uh, exploiting any types of security risk. Uh, however, we were just shut out. And so plugins to this day, like ActiveX, which tremendous amount of the clients that I program for that want to still use browser based, rely heavily on. We can't, HTML5 will never replace uh, plugins. It may be. It, 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 well, here's the thing HTML, I think down the road, um, as the browsers become more sophisticated, it will allow HTML5 to replace plugins. But like you're saying, then then you open the security hole because if the browser supports that, now all the security holes part of the HTML markup. Then we change the format of computing and we distributing, and because that means the entire thing becomes a sandbox, or you know, or the browser that bleeds into everything, which in itself. Uh, Inherently, is, is the same. I'm thinking it's just saying. I'm saying you can in the current format. It's not going to have. You just can't do it. Each provider is going to have to allow its own hooks into its system if we are to have as developers the same amount of power. Otherwise, we do this stupid cloud-based thing. And I'm not a fan of central computing in the cloud. We've had this discussion before, of like how Google operates versus. I think we're talking about iCloud versus. I'm just. I'm still. I don't like central. Well, uh, right now they're trying to push both, both Mozilla yeah. and to a point, uh, Chrome through WebKit are trying to push. We're the standard for the hook you want to hook into, but we haven't decided what that standard is going to be yet. Yeah. Uh, still, I hear what you're saying. It's still like a Chrome ideology versus an application ideology. Now applications are the plugins. We're like saying, let's write applications and we'll just use the applications to harness whatever we need uh, as far as domestic stuff goes. Okay, so applications is a, is a, is a valid thing, and, and, and I guess in that in that sense of saying, all right, we're not going to we're not going to need to plug. So we go back we go back to Flash, of which I'm not really a fan. But when I do use it, uh, I don't notice any. It's not slowing down my computer. My fans don't go off. Like I, I, you know, there's several websites that that I have on occasion like uh, motorcycle websites or car websites and things like that. They, have, they do all this fancy intro shit. Well, but okay, if you go that fancy where it where that is what's bogging down your system, uh, why Flash may use some resources, and, and, I, and I don't like Flash particularly myself, especially when it's used in menus because it breaks a lot of browser behavior. Uh, but I have messed around with trying to do stuff that complex and looked at the demos and looked at the code. When you start doing all that stuff using JavaScript, jQuery, and Raphael, you're using more resources. Yeah. I mean, it's... it's the, 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 We're going to have tools that will probably simplify doing these, these graphics and things. I just don't... Even on my HTC Evo, I didn't experience Flash bogging it down. It seemed fine. Uh, I just... That was just my experience. I'm not denying it doesn't, doesn't occur. But it, I will also say this. There's a tremendous amount of old school SWS out there. That 
that were just <laughs> piss poor coded can probably give a bad rep to to uh, Flash programming and how Flash should run. Because I guarantee you, you use some of these uh, modern, uh, modernized and correctly coded Flash projects and websites. It won't, it'll hardly put a blip on your radar. Oh, no, I, I agree with that. The problem is, and I agree with you, it's that old design, because that stuff is the old junkware that's being used for this. Create your free flash side. Yada, yada. Yeah, there's a lot of bad coded. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, from, from every, time, every, every, every time I see one of these sites that's using those, I just I feel the need to reach through the computer to whoever site it is and go, please, please. For the good of the internet, fix it. <laughs> yeah. And I'm so tired of this mantra of, like, Apple's using, we want to go open standards. The open Bullshit. standard is not the same as open source. You know, it's open to say, hey, here's all the specs. But if you don't want to participate, it's not the same way. You can't fork something in an open standard. There's no, I can now take all of this and, and just go ahead and make another technology and you have to submit it to boards. They all have to agree. All platforms participating on operating systems then have to comply. That's <laughs> not the same as open source. And I don't even. I'm so sick. I'm hearing about oh, it's an open standard. It's a standard. That's it. But it, by it, nature, any standard is open. Yeah, you're going to know about its information, but you can't use it in the same way of what is called open source. And I know people make it synonymous. Well, no, no, that, that, that's why they've gone with that name, you know, because it's a well, buzzword, yeah, it's a marketing it's a, thing. It's for many people, it's not. It's a, it is, all you're doing is essentially giving power to an oligarchy who holds the standards. The only thing, aside from pure open source, either under GPL or LGPL, that I would consider even in the same league, would be a sufficiently open core with a sufficient licensing agreement that... It, it, it's not quite GPL or LGPL, but it is sufficient enough that anybody, like you say, even though it's technically not open, it's open enough that they can take it and do anything they want under the terms of the license. Uh, yeah, but, I, I understand the goal for the specs is to get a coding standard that all browsers expect, because it used to be hell. But see, I don't have faith in standards. No, no, Even it's HTML5, myself. They can't, they can't it's get their heads it's still hell. Every single thing you do in the internet, you must do three times. Once for IE, once for Mozilla, once for WebKit, and if you really want to make it work, a fourth time for, for old browsers. It, yeah, we're still, we're still <laughs> coming to the tech. It's, I, 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 it's a great thing, and I don't think it should be given up upon, but I don't, what I'm arguing against is those that just think proprietary programming is just dumb. That is what I'm defending. I'm not going to say that trying to make the standard is dumb, but I'm, gonna, I'm saying that those people are ignorant to just say, let's fight for one thing and forget the other, because proprietary has a tremendous amount of benefits. Obviously, if you program for one proprietary thing that has plugins that universally go everywhere, you only have to write once. And while the dream of the other is you'd like to write once, it's not, it's not there. But in your, and, and if you do, you're at the lowest common denominator, always at the lowest common denominator versus something more powerful that you could probably achieve in a proprietary level. And well, okay, so a, a perfect example of that actually is um, in like terms of e-commerce, uh, the Miva script versus purely open, like PHP or so forth. Um, you can get there, but depending what you're trying to do, sometimes quick and dirty is more efficient. And it just depends what you're trying to do. However, you will eventually, in the quick and dirty, because of its proprietary nature, hit your head against the limitations of what it was designed to do. And depending on how much development you're trying to do, and that's the thing. That, that's, that's, that's the real rub. And, and I, I get that about the open thing. It's part of why I, I use Linux and I support open source. But at the end of the day, um, it gets to be an issue when you're trying to expand technology. If you're just trying to use it, it's not so much an issue, but you know, at the, at the end of the day, it does indirectly hurt the end user also. So, so all right. So that's our flash piece. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. I, I, you know, I'm surprised this took this long. <laughs> there, uh, somebody um, brand jacked Bank of America. <laughs> 
They set up a Google Plus profile and basically made it look like it was Bank of America representatives and, you know, an official bank. <laughs> you know, basically just attacking Bank of America. I like, I like, on the one hand, it's a modern practical joke. You know, I'll show you I'm pissed, consumer. On the other hand, it is brand jacking. You know, it's damaging their brand. It's not... It's, I, I sometimes wonder about this in the modern age because I think about the number of companies that just don't get it. They don't own their brand. They're not maintaining a presence everywhere. You're impossible to brand jack if you have a presence everywhere. And if you are a big corporation or somebody who somebody would want to target, you kind of want to have a brand presence everywhere so everybody knows okay, if somebody does this, that's not us. That's somebody screwing with us. And your customers already all know that. You know, people know this is you. Yep. Do, do you think companies are ever going to get that? It's, it's surprising me that this know. is still going now, on. Here's my opinion on this. Here's my opinion on this. We're testing the social and we can tie this into the Facebook thing. I, I, I'm tired of the whole social thing. <laughs> I think, I, 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 to me, it's just, let's go back to Let's go back to using the phones and, you know, or, you know, or what Skype is. It's like, if we're going to do this anonymous game where anybody can play and nobody has control, like we were talking about making that peer-to-peer -peer system, to me it's just a joke. You're susceptible to anything. It's the same thing with this Facebook thing, flooded with porn and violent images. Oh, oh gee, I wonder why. <laughs> People need to back the hell off and just look. We need to have a peer-to-peer -peer social network system that if you want to talk to your friends or try to find them, it's just an exchange and it's still peer to peer, like making one phone call to one another and so forth, whether it's using web technology or not. You're responsible for publishing your own crap and people are, have their own damn responsibility to say if they want to talk to you or not. Most of the time they should use it to say, you know, I'm, I'm here as an alternate means to communicate with my friends and family. Oh, and by the way, as a side, I am looking for people that, that uh, uh, may be looking for me that I've lost contact with. Great. Uh, all this other shit to me is just worthless. I, I, I'm sorry. That's just my opinion. I think it's. I hope one day this this entire social phenomenon just utterly backfires and people go back to. I I, I don't think that's going to happen. I I honestly think over time, um, phones are going to die. I I I, I mean. No, I'm not talking about. No, I use that as a sarcastic means. We're video conferencing from Skype. What I'm saying is it's a point to point contact. There's no real uh, anonymity between you and I. We, we're here. There's not none of these games that can be played or porn interjected or, or whatever, right? It's a real point of point communication. I I know you to accept you, and you know me to accept me, and we can use these mediums. What I'm getting at is like on Facebook, it's a neutral ground. It's like. Well, and, the, and the, the problem you're getting at is at the end of the day, all of these social things, I mean, this stuff always happened. You know, everybody remembers back in middle school and high school and college, there was that one person who got pissed off at somebody else or just in poor judgment put something on the bulletin board they really shouldn't have. The thing with that was it didn't go further than like the nearest 100 to 150 people, and then it just kind of stopped there. Uh, unless it was like somebody really, really famous or something, and then it, you know, got picked up. But uh, with the Facebook and other social things and yada yada, you know, a, a a poor judgment thing is now everywhere, uh, and it kind of gets a life of its own, um, like this poor Star Wars kid, you know, uh, which is kind of the first example of that just going out of control. <laughs> Um, I, I, some of this stuff unintentionally goes viral uh, and that is the thing it's uh, basically society either has to adjust to this stuff is no big deal or people need to have better judgment than they've ever had ever because <laughs> I'm sorry people have always had you know fits of poor judgment that's been indicative I think of every generation I don't think that's anything recent but, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't consider the social stuff bad. I consider the fact that um, it's replacing the phone and it's becoming a basically a phone book thing. 
people didn't care if somebody could pull up the yellow pages and look up their phone number. The problem is now their phone number is linked to a bajillion other things that they'd really rather people not be able to do that for. And, you know, just like when we first started putting stuff on computers, we're still adopting the mentality of, oh, maybe that's a bad idea. I, I don't know if we'll ever get that, if there's even a way to put that proper filter on. I, I'm not sure there is a way. I mean, can you... You say you want... Spend, I mean, we're getting hypothetical. My whole solution is peer-to-peer and non-social neutral, neutral grounds. Okay, but that would mean the, the regulators and the DRM police would have to back off of P2P as an evil technology and just kind of accept that it's a good right. protocol. Right, all of those guys, then that's right, they can't target central entities that are easier to target versus many. It makes it much more difficult. Well, and I happen to agree, I happen to agree with that because then it's uh, I mean I I I I don't like Facebook, but I don't agree with people suing Facebook for third party people doing things through the Facebook network. You know that's you should go after the third party, not the thing. And in the P two P thing, it, you'd go after the sourcing IP. It's uh, I don't know if this is still relevant anymore. Um, like last week, the judge, you know, basically uh, agreed to block the let Sprint and them block the AT and T thing. No, no, nothing more will happen on that this year. There'll be appeals back and forth, but for now, the deal's on hiatus, which is, I think, a good thing for the consumer. I'm not sure it's right the way it happened. You've been following that, any? No. Okay. I don't care about Yahoo going mobile. I doubt anybody else does. Don't care about the Asus ePad. Oh, I had something here on Apple. What did I do with it? Oh, since we're not doing an iWorld, what do you think about Apple appointing the chairman and electing the Disney chief to the board? Which one? Oh, we just skipped. All right. Why? Uh, why? I've been with caps or about from. Uh, I forget. Let me look. Do, 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 do. The joy of life. <laughs> Oh, yeah! Yeah, this was related to the sprint thing and the competition stuff. Uh, basically, a little wireless company is launching $20 a month unlimited voice. Uh, that Basically, they're building out a uh, VoIP solution, you know, relay VoIP network for making VoIP calls via the uh, 3G, 4G networks. Um, and they're only charging 20 bucks for it. So it's, you know, it's basically unlimited cell phone minutes for 20 bucks. The catch is, because the cell phone carriers are putting bandwidth caps in, it's not, why they're not capping you, the cell phone company's capping your usage of this stuff. Even though the bandwidth's there to support it. Uh, and this is, uh, this is a perfect example of why the cell phone companies putting these bandwidth caps in is not about preventing overloading their network, it's about protecting their agalopoly. It's about protecting that they are the only ones that provide phone service, nobody will compete with their counted cell phone minutes. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> and I mean, it's like, there's a load of companies who are primed to do this. In the next five years, I think you'll see a dozen providers prop up in Australia, Europe, and the US, and parts of Canada, that are air, buy our five to twenty dollars a month unlimited phone minutes. And if your data was unmetered, or a fixed price unmetered plan, 
you know, that's a flat price thing. No overage minutes. Just use your VoIP. I mean, Google has solutions like this. Skype has solutions like this. There's whole companies that are going to start providing handsets like this. Our applications for Android and iOS. It, it, the, the fun companies know this. At the end of the day, I think this Where is... Where the hell are you? I'm trying to... Oh, you're right here. All right. I, I'm in that article you had. Yeah, I, I, yeah, that is exactly what we're discussing on, on other shows. Yeah. Is, is, yeah. I thought this was a story you were talking about. <laughs> yeah. No, we, we, we covered this. In, I mean, isn't it neat to see that stuff that we've discussed really, really a while back even, you know, it raises its head and really comes to flesh. It's, uh... Uh, it's not like this stuff is hard to predict. I mean, it, the technology is there. It's just it had to get cheap enough and people had to build their infrastructures out. I mean, it does take an infrastructure to do relay forwarding like this for VoIP. You can't just go. Oh, I'm going to do avoid relay forwarding. It just it doesn't. You can't just turn on one day and do that. But what? And it, this pisses me off. Um, this is. I, I don't like federal regulation. But if the federal regulators want to get involved and actually prevent abuses that prevent competition, I mean something they re they should stop looking at Google and they should come in and look at AT and T, Verizon. You know, look at what they're doing. Look at Comcast. Look, look at, look at what these bandwidth caps do. Look at how they don't charge for their thing. They don't count their. If they're going to put a bandwidth cap in, they need to count the bandwidth their services uses against the cap. They'll never do that because their services by themselves use the cap up. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. I, I heard something. <laughs> yeah, I heard a, a little chat thing go off. Oh, uh, there he is. <laughs> You're late. Yes, I know. Slap me now. I can't slap you. You're thousands of miles away. <laughs> I'm about a thousand miles away, but that's besides the point. Okay. <laughs> Hey, technology grand. <laughs> uh, we're down to... Uh, we've kind of covered the what the fucks, unless you want to cover the uh, ya uh, Yahoo mobile app. I, no. Yeah, and like, really? Okay. Um, uh, the Asus E-Pad, which, I, yeah, it's apparently it's the gadget of the year. Like, really? <laughs> Um, oh, I don't know if we want to go into the hacking stuff. That's almost political. <laughs> Ugh. We were fixing to get into Apple, actually. Um, it, it, uh, oh, cover some stuff that you, yeah, cover some stuff that, uh, which stuff? <laughs> well, I mean, you, you skipped, um, we went over the the Google one. We went over Facebook. All right, well, we went over this uh, judge in the Sprint suit. Sprint. Well, it's because there was nothing much else to add to it. Yeah. yeah uh, we covered that the other show. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I know. It, it, it's a, it? which right. one? I which, guess you have Google to go on to then. Yeah, it's like unless you want to talk about Apple, it's like okay. We'll do that afterwards. Just I, okay.